Brother gon' rise with the sun, step two Get some good, some food in you Step three, think real hard about what you wanna be Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing Wake up, today's gonna be a good day 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 Wake up Today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day Yo, Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison, they ride, uh Head full of flowers, so here come the clouds, uh They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost, uh yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Makeshift graves out here. Pee Wee Gaskins actually made his victims dig their own graves. He has 15 bodies confirmed on him, and he says that there's more than 110 uh, additional bodies. Uh, he could have just been trying to get a recognition for being the biggest serial killer in American history. Back in those days, he'd pick up hitchhikers off the side of the road and said he murdered them so there may be more bodies there may not be here in front of an area right off of Edie Ford Road following the tracks following where the bodies were uh, the man was convicted of 15 this is not including the gentleman he blew up in jail that was on death row he could have been being truthful uh, I don't see at what point him telling that he had 110 bodies why would he need to lie at that point? Tom, it's just a tough subject. A recent study by Brown University showed that nearly 450 children are killed each year by their parents. My daughters were picked up on a Friday by their father to spend the weekend. And that night he um, pumped carbon monoxide into their bedroom slit their throats. This has begun for two children killed by their mother in Pickens County. Nine-year-old Hayden King was laid to rest today. Hayden's four-year-old sister Harper will have a celebration of life service tomorrow morning. Here's a story that's breaking at six o'clock. It's all centered around the three people you see on your screen. The key pieces in a Middletown murder case. On the left is James Hutchinson. Police say the six-year-old was killed allegedly by his own mother. East Los Angeles mother was charged today with killing her three young children. The youngest was less than two months old.
at six with breaking news. Good evening to you, friends. Greg Merriweather along with Elizabeth Vow. Our top story today, that precious little two-year-old right now, two people are facing charges, accused of murdering little Nebea Allen. Investigators found the two-year-old dead in Mississippi after several days of searching. One of those blamed in her death, the girl's mother, Lanaya Cardwell. To the West Coast. We are everywhere. True crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work, we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, good afternoon, my beautiful people of YouTube and X. It's nice to see you today. We've got a lot to go over and unpack for the Madeline Soto case. <clears throat> I had um, analyzed this case a little bit. I know uh, we're kind of 50-50 on the chat. You know, some people are just, you know, gung-ho about mom. Other people are, you know, kind of like me, like we feel like she was also a victim of this monster. But before we get into that, I just want to take a few moments to advocate for another young boy that is missing at this moment. Uh, so if we can just take a few moments to advocate for Sebastian Rogers, here's his case. There is a lot of issues going on with this case that are now flooring detectives and the family. I've been monitoring the case of Sebastian Rogers. He's a boy that went missing in Tennessee. His mom has a message. Love you so much, and we want you to come home, and you're not in trouble. Search into the 15-year-old's disappearance has all failed. This is a boy that has autism. He's a high-functioning autistic individual, and the parents are coming under heavy fire right now because it is leading to believe that foul play is involved. But here is something that the stepfather had to say early on in the investigation. Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed, people pointing fingers at them. You're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Many here in the public are just concerned about the well-being of Sebastian Rogers and would like to see him come home and come home safely. However, the boy has been missing for a significant amount of time, and now this particular case has led investigators to a landfill. Landfills appear to be the most promising place for parents to dump their children because this is not the first time. I was on scene at the Leilani case, and this was related to her 20-month-old son, Quentin Simon, which was found in a landfill. Leilani Simon is behind bars. Also, Elijah Vu, he has not been found yet. He's missing from Two Rivers, Wisconsin. And also the detectives and the investigators in this case have gone to the landfill and are currently doing a landfill search. Now that we know that foul play is perceived in this case, we are gonna take a look at the parents' interview. Please stay tuned and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Bullhorn Betty channel here on TikTok. All right, so that was for Sebastian Rogers. What a um, 
you know, it's one of those cases where you just don't really know what to think. You know, the parents, there's a few things in the parents interview I, I have uh, some questions with and we'll be rolling those out um, in the week. We're going to probably have to tag team these a little bit and maybe do, you know, part Madeline, part Sebastian um, on the cases throughout the next week. Uh, but either or. Let's get right into Madeline Soto. A lot of people have been very curious and concerned with the Madeline Soto case, predominantly with her mom and how much her mother knew. It's really dominating the airways because let's face it, we have survivors, okay? We have survivors out there that have survived this very type of abuse. And there's a lot of different um issues that go on with this type of abuse from the the uh, victim not telling anybody because of fear uh for whatever fear factors were uh known to them uh some told their their uh mom or somebody else you know sometimes these people didn't live with their mom and dad they lived with other people and those other people did not believe them and a lot of girls that I, or women, I, they're, they're women now, um, that have been reaching out to me have also uh, expressed their experiences uh, with their mom not knowing. So it's really sad to think that this type of abuse does happen. We talk about it on my channel all the time. And we talk about that when we go to school, we're always instructed and taught about stranger danger. But very rarely uh, do our teachers teach us about the, the dangers that go on with the people that are supposed to love and protect us the most. And I think that in this particular case, I'm uncertain one way or another whether Maddie told her mom or alleged to speak to her mom about certain things. I can say that maybe her, her Maddie may have tried because, and I'll, I'll explain why I feel this way, may have tried to tell her mom, but didn't use the right words. And her mom may have just thought it was like physical abuse, not this type of abuse. And it's because of one, one of the statements her friends had made uh, to a news crew. Either way, the debate on what mom knew and what mom didn't know continues. I said up front that I felt like she was his victim too, that he was really manipulative. I, I went as far as to say when I was doing my victimology that um, she was most likely somebody that had low self-esteem of herself and uh, gave all to her relationships, especially with him because he was a good looking, tall, dark, handsome guy. Uh, probably somebody that she wasn't accustomed to, to dating. And, and so those factors played into this as well. And then you couple that with the fact that I felt like she was the breadwinner, that um, he was kind of the bum, but she loved him so much, you know, team player, we'll, def we'll subdivide this, we got this, you know, type of thing. And this, he took care of her daughter. Many, I had a question um, about how they met. And there is some details in the past. I don't know if this is is how they met, but it, it looks like that, you know, they were working for Disney around the same time at some point in the last eight years. I've also learned that they have, this is going to be a jaw dropper, most likely have been in a relationship of eight years or longer. That's correct. That means this man watched Madeline grow up which even makes this a little more depraved, in my opinion. Just sitting there looking at, just, I, I can't, I can't. I'm not doing it this Sunday. I can't. We'll keep it. We're, we're going to try to keep this as clean as possible. I can't. God bless this family. God bless this child. I don't know what to say. I'm getting sick of covering these cases, but we have to cover it because we need awareness brought to this, this sick, sick garbage. But what I will say, and this is on my political platform as well as my true crime platform, there is a culture at the Disney World family of um, entertainment attraction, attra you know, tourist attractions, whatever you want to call them, Epcot, Disney World, all of them. There is a culture there. I live in Florida, so I know who... Grady Judd is. A lot of people out there don't understand who Grady Judd is. I can tell you I've been in this one county my entire life. My family's practically built this entire county because we've been here for so many generations. I grew up on Grady Judd before Grady Judd was known to the rest of the world. 
and every time he does an STSA type of sting, it is always, even with the children, even with the damn children, excuse my language on a Sunday. It just, I get, I get a little hot under the collar. It is always, I have not seen in the last several years, I mean, maybe one, maybe there is an outlier out there. Maybe. But it's always has a Disney employee somewhere in the mix. Always. We don't have PepsiCo employees always in the mix. We don't have other huge corporations always in the mix. But you know what is always in the mix of these things? Always a Disney employee. Somewhere in the mix. Somewhere in the mix. And then we have this, this animal coming from Disney. It's just, it's a culture that I, I'm just going to throw it out there. You guys say what you want to about Disney, but I am a no Disney. Uh, I, just like some of you guys are no Trumpers, I'm a no Disney person. I will not support Disney. I will not go to Disney. I will not go to any of their parks. I have boycotted Disney and I will continue to do so because I'm sick of this stuff right here being bred across our country. This is not okay. This is not okay. So we do have evidence that he did actually work for Epcot. <clears throat> Just to give us a little background and a little history on why I'm advocating for Jen Soto. This is not a popular viewpoint because many people believe she knew something. She's responsible. But we're going to break this down because I really feel when I saw her and saw some of her behaviors, I have seen those behaviors before. And those behaviors look to me like a battered wife. Um, her mannerism, she just, there was just a few things that just triggered me that, that put that light bulb above my head. And sometimes people misdiagnose it, so to speak. Okay. But we've got some more information. And I really think if you, if we just break this down, I think other people, and I'm not trying to make you change your mind. I'm just trying to give you the full, um, insight because we all are really looking at what happened since the day she disappeared. In order for us to identify who she was around, we have to look at a long time before she disappeared. We have to understand who she was around, what their personality is. Do you understand how difficult that is when you're looking at paper? Because you don't get the vibes and the sense of somebody like you do when you're there face to face with them, belly to belly with them. So we're trying to have to, you know, do this, this, this tap dance around all this information to derive a sense of who these people were. And I just never derived the sense that this woman was this horrible monster to her daughter. It just, the, the look, we do, do this a lot. We see this a lot. And I'm just not getting, but you know what? In all fairness, in all fairness, there are people in my audience that are. And so we have to cater to both of those. Because there is, there truly is a 50-50 when it comes to this mom and my audience. So give me just a second. Let me cue this up. We're going to be just listening to this. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. If you guys are a subscriber, of course, to the Bullhorn Betty channel or Bullhorn Betty Crime Stories, right? If you're not, if you haven't subbed up, sub up now. I'm on uh, TikTok as well as YouTube. Jennifer Soto is the mother of the missing 13-year-old girl that was recovered on the side of the road. And since then, uh, Jennifer Soto's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, has been arrested for child abuse and uh, SA of her daughter. We learned that that SA started back in 2022. And I find some of the comments in this latest post uh, pretty telling. Was the mom, Jennifer Soto, being drugged by... Uh, Stefan Stearns. It is possible. When I was friends with Jen back in 2022, she was prescribed a high dose of antipsychotic for her bipolar, but had mentioned she took it all at once right before bed and it would basically knock her out until morning. She complained about having a super hard time waking up in the mornings. I suggested that she should take half in the a.m. and half in the p.m. or go to the doctor because it sounded like she was way over medicated. But it also could have been that she wasn't taking the medication as prescribed. Because I personally know that Jen felt that she was more creative when she was manic and actually enjoyed how it felt. One time she texted me 
and said her and I should not take our medications for a week and create art and music. And I literally replied, ha ha, nope. I met her on Bumble BFF when I was living in Orlando. We're no longer friends because Stefan had taken himself off his psych meds and had threatened to unalive himself in front of Jen. She didn't think it was a big deal, but I told her I would not be going to her house until Stefan got help because I knew he was always armed. That made her upset at me and ultimately ended our friendship. It's hard for me to say whether Jen is guilty. She seemed to love Maddie, but I also know she ignored major red flags when it came to Stefan, which she proved to me when she thought it was no big deal that he threatened to pew pew himself in front of her. So part of me wonders if she just wouldn't let herself accept that he was hurting Maddie if Maddie did indeed tell her what he was doing. All she said was that they had gotten into an argument. She never mentioned what the argument was about, but her unbothered reaction to him saying that made me feel like him saying stuff like that was a regular occurrence. Stern was armed. We saw his Reddit post, but his weapons collection and forum posts, manipulative suicidal threats, and tactics utilized by nearly all emotional abusers. I wonder what triggered him to make these threats. Interesting. That is very interesting to say the least. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think mom knew or do you think mom was just in denial? So that was one of the videos I put out. I can't remember if I put it out early this morning or last night, but it was one of the ones that I had uh, put out. Maybe it was earlier yesterday. I can't remember. Uh, I do a lot of videos, um, but the, the, there's a few key things here is, and, and this is what we need to talk about is a lot of people are bringing up to me is one about the, about his phone because law enforcement got his phone. He did the factory reset. They were able to find some images there that they were able to arrest him on, on some pretty sick charges, um, uh, even in the engagement part of it. So they obviously had something a little more than just photography. I'll leave it at that. Um, we hear that, but we hear that they, they, that both happens like around 2022, many people brought to me, well, what phone was he using before 2022 and what images, if any, are on that phone? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if law enforcement is getting the answer to that. I don't know if they found his prior phone, if he had a prior phone mm -hmm. or if he destroyed his prior phone. I can tell you for me, I've got phones literally all over this house, right? Uh, I, I don't throw my phones away because they always had um, data on them. Back in the day, we didn't really we didn't really have a good way of pulling that data off our phones uh, and putting on hard drives like we do today. It's a lot easier today, but once upon a time, what was on your phone was on your phone. So does he have a situation like that? We're learning that this guy was in this young girl's life for at least eight years which gives this a whole nother level of just disgust, in my opinion, just absolutely disgust. Second, sorry, I turned the silencer, silencer on. And then you hear around this 2022 mark, which is where we know for absolute certain, confirmed by law enforcement that this abuse started happening. And we get this news from her friend that in 2022, she was basically being zonked out at night and having a hard time getting up out of bed. So now we're starting to incorporate that in and saying, wait a minute. You know, is this lady sleeping through the night so hard that she wouldn't be hearing, being able to hear any type of commotion going on in her home? The answer is yes. Yes, there that is possible. We also have another, and, and the fact that he could be adding some other stuff into her medication. There is that as well. There are a whole host of things that can answer some of these questions and, and why I say we need to be cautious because I don't want people blaming a mom that, that just did not know. You, should she have known? You know, it's so easy to say, yeah, we all should know. You know, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've been duped by family, by friends, but you know what? I should have known, right? But you don't because they're convincing. They're convincing. Another thing that is in this um, information, right, is the fact that he carries a gun. 
He's been known to have a gun. He is himself supposed to be on medication. So now we have an element of not only just authority, but him having and being known to have a weapon. He's already uh, he's already told Jen he's wanting to often unalive himself for whatever this for whatever this argument was over. What if this argument was over her daughter? Because there are some statements that he made on Reddit that kind of just alarm bells. Alarm bells. Everybody wants to know what happened in this case prior to. I really don't know, but we are going to go ahead and look at some um, some factors in this case. Let me get past this. This is me, me, me. This is the timeline into it. And for Disney World that wants to keep saying that this man was not employed for him, I think it is now well acknowledged. This man worked in the Disney family, and that statement about him being a Disney cast member is absolutely 100% accurate. While they were doing their um, uh, investigation, it appears that Jen Soto's car was also included in that investigation. I know many people are wanting to know whether or not he... um, uh, you know, whether things were searched. It appears that everything was searched. There's his mugshot. We all know this. Now let's go back to a few things that we have learned that kind of give my assessment a little more, a little more weight, you know, like it, it is holding water a little bit. Here are some of the things that I said when we were analyzing this case. And this was when everybody's pointing the finger at mom. I said, the mom, in my opinion, I feel like this guy targeted the mother because of her daughter. I still believe that even eight years later, him watching her grow up. There's uh, a few key key factors here that, that make me uneasy. The girl could not sleep alone. I'd like to know, did she sleep with her mom and her boyfriend? Did she sleep with just her mom? Was she ever in bed with just him as mom come home from work? These are questions I have. We have a friend that said that um, she remember, he remembers her telling him that um, Stefan had hurt her and this was back in 2022, but he, he, she said hurt her. Nothing to the level of what we learned happened. Okay, so that leads me to believe maybe she did try to tell her mom, but wasn't using the right words. And then you have that threat element because he was known to carry a gun and he was known to threaten himself to unalive himself to manipulate the mom and doing what she wanted, because if she didn't, he was going to pull that trigger. So now you have that level of abuse there, mental, emotional abuse, which I also had suspected was going on inside this home. I also stated that I felt this mom was working a lot and most likely the breadwinner. We have people that can say just that. I'm going to be using a little portion of Gray Hughes um, interview. It's only about a a, a two minute portion of it. And it is, oh, from 550, not 450. Hold on a second. Let me get it where it needed to be. No, I think it was 450. Yeah, it was definitely 450. So we're going to go ahead and hear and talk about. It's about a story of something where he pulled out a knife. Again, this is from Gray Hughes. I'm using this under um, fair use because we are going to be commentating on just a few things from the 550 mark to the 754 mark in this. And um, what's coming up is how protective this man is or allegedly is.
So now we know he's protective. And then we go uh, just a little bit forward and we find out he, he has weapons. Now, not only is this gun an issue, let's listen to this. Let me just go back just a few quick seconds, maybe right there. They were not the good kids. They were not the good kids. And then we're going to go forward. I'm just going to go ahead and let it play because it's only 10 seconds of just conversation. And he's going to go into one of my other theories that I had suspected that this guy had employment issues and most likely the mom was the breadwinner, therefore leaving her daughter in the care of this man's custody that she's been dating. Oh, no sound. Sounds good here. Okay, Jessica, you need to turn your volume up. Everybody else can hear. I can't hear the video. Who else can't hear the video? Can anybody else not hear the video? I can hear BHB. You could hear the video? Okay. Because I set all this stuff up after I set up my volume, so I shouldn't have any issues. Uh, sound is fine. Okay, so the people that I trust are saying it's good. So everybody else needs to turn up their speaker volumes. So um, now we're going to go into where my other theory was being um, explored here. And it sounds like he did have the employment issue. So let's just hear that. Can somebody let me know whether I have sound on the video or not, please? Because my mods are telling me I have great sound. And then now I'm, can somebody tell me whether I have sound? No sound. Okay. Let me tell you, Jen, if you can, no, it doesn't really matter. Give me just a second. All right, we're going to try to refresh again. What just happened? Oh. Can you guys hear it? No sound. We hear Betty. Not the video. Okay. I'm going to try. Yes, I, I can hear Betty fine, but not the video. When I ask about this, guys, I'm just asking about the video, not whether you guys can hear me. Only the video. And, and so I'm going to play the video now. If you guys can hear the video... Please let me know. Again, I don't know what's causing these issues. I ha apparently have been having them all week. So I'll have to figure it out at a later time. I'll listen on my own phone. Just... Not on the video. Okay. <sighs> okay. Well, either way, Not this is what. Video. Okay. Let me get this off. Okay. Either way, all he's saying is there's an interview with a friend. If you guys need to go to Gray Hughes to listen to it, go to Gray Hughes to listen to it. I don't know what's going to go on with the rest of my videos that I have lined up, but it is what it is. I don't know what else to do. I guess the best thing I can do is refresh my screen and refresh all this stuff again. So give me a second. I will be right back.
Can we hear now? Because that's the best it's going to be. Otherwise, I'm going to have to play this stuff on my phone. If we cannot hear these audios, I'll just play them on my phone. I've got them all lined up. Still no sound. No sound at all. How can this flipping be? Ah, for fuck's sake. Excuse my language. Here, you know what I'll do? I'll turn the whole equipment off. If you guys can't hear it after the stupid equipment's off, I'm... I've got all the equipment off, okay? Can you guys still hear me? Because I've got all the equipment off. There should be no reason why we have no sound. Can you guys hear that, yes or no? Give me just a second. All right, if this doesn't work, you know what? It's Sunday. I, I'm frustrated already, so I'm killing the live. If we don't get sound out of this, the live's over. Do you guys hear it? Oh, I know why, because a stupid phone. Can you guys hear me now? It's the stupid phone. The phone keeps it keeps hooking up, hooking up accidentally. I don't know how to turn it off, but every time I try to charge this phone, it hooks up and, and throws my um, okay and throws this. Can you guys hear this now? Can you guys hear the, um, okay. Well, I'm over, I'm over trying to get Gray Hughes to play um, on here. I can't get it to, so I'm not gonna worry with it. So I'll just go over and explain everything I'm hearing since you guys can't hear it, okay? Um, there's, there's only so much I can do. I'm doing everything I can. Uh, I don't know why my, I don't know why my volume's no longer working on StreamYard. Like I, I to me, I can't figure that out. How, um, how this is not working on StreamYard all of a sudden in the last week? I just don't know how to use my computer. It seems like it's something with StreamYard. So I guess we'll have to move over to RealStream or Restream or 
Yeah, nobody can hear me because something happened with my phones. Okay, so let's get back to the show. Um, I'll try to play this again. I don't know if it's going to play because I don't know what the F is going on with the whole reset permissions. Let's reset this. Maybe it's some stupid thing. I don't know why these things are together. Can you guys hear that? Probably not. All right, I'm back. Give me a second. Now, if you guys can't hear this, this is this is like the it for me because I've I'm like I said, it's Sunday. I'm just coming here because I didn't go live yesterday. I can't get my stuff working. I can tell you after we uh, we get our. Um, camera i have made the decision today after this after this whole week of mess we're going back to windows based products i'm done with apple products i'm done with mac products i'm done with it all so we will start sponsoring uh, new computers and new phones um I, I but i can't keep dealing with this with mac products i i have the most problems with this everything works with my windows products but my uh, computer was smashed in by um S southwest and so Olivia talked me into all this MacBook stuff, and I don't like it. So, um, Jen, go ahead and, and tell that. us what's going on with Maddie. Well, um, Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school, 
across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school. Thank you. Okay. Um, so there we have it. We got some stuff. I'm going to try to go back to Gray Hughes stuff yep. for, I mean, so we had, um, and this, this is just going back. Sorry guys for all the problems, all the technical issues we have. Again, I know I won't have them with window based products. I'm tired of, of MacBook. I'm tired of Apple products. They're indestructible and I get that. But when they don't want to work with any of your equipment, because it's, it, you have to pay a thousand dollars for everything to work with Apple. I'm done with it. If it's going to be that bougie and I'm going to spend top of the line money for it and I can't get nothing to work with it, I don't need it. I absolutely do not need it. The, God, the sounds got again. <sighs> from from my perspective, uh, Stefan has always been protective right. of his friends, his family, like, and that's what that was to me. That was, you know, this this drunk dude is approaching his. It, I don't even think it was his girlfriend at the time. I think there's there's a huge backstory with all of that. Uh, but uh, was approaching her, and you know he defended her, and that's what that scenario was. And yeah, he was he was the kind of kid that had pocket knives, and we, we that, that's the group we were in. We, you know, we were not we were not the good kids. You know. <laughs> They were not yeah, the good yeah, kids. I, started, I, I opened my own video game store here in Colorado, and you know he had he had told me that he was you know not working and needed work, and uh, I was like, dude, come here, please come here. My employees are not great. Uh, I need help. So he wasn't working either. Oh, thank you, TL, for the five gifted Bullhorn Betty memberships. We we appreciate the love and support, especially now that we're gonna. We have officially decided to change out our equipment. I'm done with the MacBook products. I'm done. I do not. I've never liked MacBook stuff. I don't like the way it functions, the way it works, or anything like that. The only thing I like about the Apple phone is I can drop it a thousand times and it does not destroy. Outside of that, everything else I hate about it. So we'll get this all resolved. Just give me about six months. We'll have no problems moving forward. And then he told me, uh, well, you know, uh finances for me to come there don't look so great and you know I, I don't know how i would cover these expenses and my dad said this and you know all these like it just seemed like so he was a bum this man was a bum living off of his girlfriend which is what i suspected because i'm telling you when we when i did my victimology on on this family I, 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 I had to equate that there were some abuses. I didn't know to this level. I didn't know he threatened to unalive himself in front of Jen. I didn't know that he was also on a psych, you know, some, some medication for mental health. She was on medication for mental health. She was working. She was taking her medication at night. It was zonking her slap out. She was having a hard time waking up in the morning, which was another one of my, um, predictions is that she most likely wasn't up that morning or when she did get up he could have had the shower running across there yeah victimology so here let me of course my nothing's working um where's my victimology i actually figured people would have that very question what is victimology and i actually had it already pulled up but of course it's gone give me just a second the question was, what is victimology? What is victimology? Here we go. Oh, well, thank you, Reggie. I love that. Thank you. God bless you. So victimology is the study 
of uh, victims of crime and the psychological effects on them of their experience. So, you know, we're looking at the victimology. We're looking at a lot of different things about these people. And the bottom line is, is based upon, good Lord. Here we go. Let me get back here. There we go. And so the victimology, it, it was just showing that there were some other stressors in this home. There had to have been other stressors in this home. And so we didn't quite understand them. Give me just a second. I can't work without my, um, my mouse. It's not working. I got to Bluetooth it back together. Just give me a second. I think my, honestly, you know what I think the biggest problem is, is I honestly think that my, um, I got too much crap. I need to clean out my computer and clean out my phone. My phone's been freezing up. The computer's been freezing up. Every damn thing's been freezing up. So I think that's what it is. I just do too much. Do too much. So let's get back to this one. This is the weird interview. And then there's we're going to get to Plunder. Plunder has a few things that she was able to use AI on. It was easier just to pull the stuff from her than it is to try to recreate it myself. Uh, we're going to be using such a small, minute section of it that uh, it's not going to really make a difference. But here is this um, this other interview. There were actually like two different interviews this lady. There may have been more than two. These are the two that I found. We played the one yesterday uh, where she was interviewed and then her, um, her, you know, Stefan Stearns was interviewed and just their weird behavior. But here's some more really weird and bizarre behavior from him. And it's almost like intimidating because let's face it, he had to have an intimidating role in that household to keep mom under control and to keep the child silent. Now, again, that's up for debate because there are people out there that believe that this woman knew and just didn't believe her daughter. But did she? And that's going to be the major debate we're going to have up until we start seeing arrests on here. And nobody's going to be right and nobody's going to be wrong until the arrests happen. I don't know. I, I've listened to a lot of people across the, the board saying that mom's going to get arrested for lying for the boyfriend. Um, I don't necessarily believe that that's going to be the case for whatever reason. I Maybe she will. Uh, but I'm deep in my gut. There's a reason why my gut is screaming so hard about this one aspect of the case. And I don't know why, but it is only my gut. Right. And my gut can be wrong. You know, I don't want to believe it could be, but it could be. She crossed the street. Um, and oh, walked to school, was... what we thought walked to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point. Um, it was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes. Look at his behavior. Up. He gets just into the sideline. Now, mind you, she's on the computer having this interview. She's having this interview with this TV through like a Zoom or conference type of call. And he positions himself right in the corner of her screen. So while she's having this conversation, he can see everything she's doing and the facial expressions she's making. Again, does mom know? I don't know. I truly believe that this woman was asleep at the wheel. I really do. I believe that she was just overtaxed. I feel that, that she was you know, trying to keep everything together, trying to keep their apartment paid, trying to keep this, trying to keep that, relying on him for very little because he's a freaking bum. And all she needs from him is just to, 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 to make sure that he keeps that probably the house clean or, you know, picks up, blah, 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 you know, the same thing. It is my understanding, which I don't know if I agree with this or not, but it's my understanding that she was the one that generally took her daughter to school. And that he didn't really have a, a handle in that, a hand in that. 
But I really don't believe that. I believe it was normal and customary for her to sleep in because she was the breadwinner. She had the problem getting up in the morning and she was tired. I think it took her off guard when that uh, when that um, news guy had asked her, what did you say to her that morning when she left? And she kind of was in shock and had to remind them that she didn't speak to her until the night before, even though she implied she saw her that morning. I don't think she saw her that morning. I think I think there was something where she thought she was in the shower. Or Stephen or Stefan had told her she's already up, she's getting dressed. There's just something more here. And I just don't believe everything that this this that I'm seeing in this woman screams monster to me. And I don't understand how people are seeing it in her. I just don't. I'm, I'm obviously missing something here if she's this horrible monster that fed her daughter to the wolf. You know, I just don't see that here. And everybody that talks about her talks about how she loved her daughter. Everybody talks about how weird that guy is. All of his past people talk about he wasn't part of the good crowd. You guys don't even want to see the stuff I'm going to be bringing to you guys this upcoming week about some of the statements this man made. Some of the statements this man made are enough to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. and walk towards the school but she never made it for that walk from and that was around 9 a.m when she got up uh she never made it to school after that um it's right next to the school i don't know why she didn't make it i don't know if something happened on her walk along the way or if she got taken but she never made it and that um, was the last anyone seen of her or heard from her yes um I went to pick her up after school um, and she wasn't there. Um, and we also have to remember that, you know, Stefan would have been advising her what she was doing, advising her what she was wearing, advising her where she he dropped her off. Again, this is a man she's had in her life for a significant number of years. When you're with somebody for eight years, you've, uh, you've had you pretty much know who that person is. So you think, you know what I'm saying? Like after eight years, you've dealt with a lot of ups and downs. You, you, you're a unit at that point. This is not a, a, a new relationship. This is not two years or under. This is a significant amount of time. This man watched Maddie grow up, which again, it is very uh, even more depraved than when we started this journey um, just a few, you know, just a week or so ago, right? The 26th, I, I a little couple weeks ago, eight years, she knew. You trust them after eight years, right? You trust them after, and, and granted, yeah, Allie, I think she do does know. She knows that he has a weapon. She knows that he's volatile. She knows that he's willing to, if he doesn't get his way, he's wanting to, doom, you know, um, using all those manipulative type of strategy. The, the thing is, is with these types of predators, they're conniving, they're cunning, they're manipulative. And so I feel like, you know, he would have been still playing that he was the perfect boyfriend, the perfect um, significant other. Meanwhile, he was the he was the wolf in sheep clothing. And mom's asleep at the wheel because she's got her own problems she's dealing with. She's dealing with trying to keep the lights on and feeding the family. Because I think this guy was a joke. I've seen them a dime a dozen. They go, they're good looking. They, they're absolute pieces of garbage. They, they suck the life out of any desperate woman that's willing to take them in. And, and, and all they got to do is smile. And the woman's hook, line, and sinker because she's lonely. You know, and I don't want to paint mom as a desperate, desperate, lonely woman. But, you know, to be honest with you, uh, he's a good looking guy that she probably is not accustomed to having. And that's just the real, real. Don't have to like my opinion. But it's my opinion. She looks, you know, she's a, she's a beautiful woman. Don't get me wrong. It just seems like. She would, she, this, this guy was attracted to her for all the wrong reasons. That's all I'm saying. So I started driving around, try, maybe thinking she took a walk. Maybe she decided to walk to 
my mom's office, which is pretty close to the school as well, drove around and I didn't see anything. I drove back to the school. The school was closed. I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. Have um, you heard from like any of her friends? Has she been active on any social media? She hasn't been active on social media. None of her chats, none of her games. Uh, we did contact all her friends. None of the one thing I can honestly say is that her mother's story was consistent from interview to interview, as far as I could see, mostly consistent. Um, so, for example, when Stacy Wandra was had just gotten out of jail and he was, you know, trying to clear his name in the Michael Monkey Bond case. He went to like Dolly Vision, uh, Brooks Channel, um, and then uh, over to Justice for All's channel. And it was like every single interview he gave, he changed details. Most of the time, it was the timeline. Because, you know, when we hear things like if you're like me, you have a pad of paper. You know, you have a pad of paper next to you. So when you're hearing these interviews, you're putting down time, you know, time, what was said, you know, you're, you're, you're taking notes. And so one of the very first things I always take notes of the timeline, when they give a specific date and a specific time, I, I map those things. And he's that, so that's the very first thing is because I'm, 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 I'm like that with the time. As soon as he went to like, I, I think he went to Dolly Vision, then Justice for All or Justice to All, then Dolly Vision, one of the two. And from one to the other, he literally changed his timeline an hour. Where he told on one creator he was there at 5.30, he told on the other creator he was there at 6.30. So that's what I'm saying. For the most part, in my opinion, her statements have been mostly consistent. However, there were some inconsistencies. And I think those inconsistencies is because those inconsistencies were told to her by someone else where she didn't have knowledge and they're the ones that informed her. And I believe the person that informed her of those details was Stefan Stern, which would make sense because there was only two of them in the house. There's three of them in the house. One is missing, two are left. And you're seeing them here on the camera. So... Okay, hold on. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm ready for plunder. Okay, here, here's the Spanish version of. Let me see if I can get it in in English because we were gonna. I'm gonna go over to. Um, no, it won't let me do it in English. Click settings to change it. Uh, we don't want French caption. We want English caption. And it won't give me English. It gives me French and Spanish uh, options. Let me see if I can get some other options. It's not going to let me put it in, in, in English for whatever reason. So we will have to go over to pl Plunders. So this is, the, this is the major issue that I have is that when we are learning of the grandmother, um, the grandmother spoke to Telemundo, I think it was Telemundo 31, um, which is a Spanish speaking uh, news broadcast uh, type of uh, mainstream media thing. Um, long story short, her mother gave a Spanish speaking interview with them. And there were a few things that came up in that Spanish speaking interview that Plunder was able to use some AI and bring it down to English. And we were able to understand what she was saying. And there was a couple things that she said. Um, one of the major things that she said that caught me off guard was that Madeline Soto um, had many fears and didn't sleep alone. So here, I'm just going to let you hear just a few moments of this, and then we'll get on to another statement that was said. Admitted she was a little girl with a lot of fears who could not sleep alone. I think she can do that. She's a kid, like with many fears, so much so that she does not sleep alone and... I do not believe she can leave or run away, leave her house. So her 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 grandmother was saying this in in a in a the respect of trying to explain why she does not think her um, granddaughter would run away. She's so fearful that she sleeps. 
She won't sleep alone. She's so fearful that she won't sleep alone. Let me repeat that again. She's so fearful that she won't sleep alone. So again, it comes back to the whole manipulation demeanor of Stefan Stearns and why I believe the mom is, is a victim of him. I believe she's a victim of him. I, I, you know, we really won't know the truth until law enforcement releases more information on the topic. But we know these types of predators. This guy was a predator, guys. A predator of children. So what makes us think that he is not going to be manipulating mom right along with that child? Now, again, I know that there's 50-50 here. And we're, yeah, I'm sure my 50% my is in there screaming, mom, no! <laughs> I know you guys, and I'm not addressing it. I know it. I know it. It's got to be infuriating. It's got to be infuriating. And the reason why I'm not addressing that the fact that mom knows is because I, I can't, me, myself, can't wrap my little mind around that mom knew. And it's like, you know, I almost need to be knocked into sense in order for me to accept the fact that the mother, this mother that, that uh, for all intents and purposes has this appearance of absolutely loving her child has turned out to be this monster that allowed this man to abuse her child. Like I'm having a hard time with everything I've learned about this family to wrap my head around. Not that you guys aren't seeing the stuff I'm seeing. It's just that I'm reading it different. I respectfully disagree. TV rem uh, remote goes missing in my house and everyone turns on each other. If Maddie was missing and wasn't questioned, it cannot I cannot call her a, a victim regardless of what she knew. Okay, well, you know, fair enough perspective. Fair enough perspective. Um, let's just keep going. I still believe that, you know... Um, I think we're being a little too harsh on mom, but you know what? When push comes to shove and everything comes out in the wash, I might not have been hard enough. You know, there's, there's ways we can look at this. There's ways we can look at this. But in this case, I'm just dealing with an abundance of caution due to the child's age and due to the fact that this mother lost her only child from my understanding. So I'm, I'm trying to put some sensitivity in that and some humanity in that as well, because it's so easy to sit in judgment with when we're only judging on conjecture. And I want to make sure everybody understands there's nobody out there that has adequate um, evidence to support that this, because if they did at this stage in the game, we're on March 10th, she disappeared on February 26th. If there was something like that out there that somebody had tangible, it would be plastered all over social media at this moment, okay? Because web sleuths are, are just that. And, and within the amount of time that we've had to work, if there was something out here that, that kind of led us to believe that, it would be a, on, on social media. You're, we're finding none. And if you have something, you send it to somebody so it can be brought, because people don't want to be in the dark and they don't want to feel duped. And uh, I have a, a, a hard, because people are harder on Bullhorn Betty than they are on any other creator on this platform. So uh, with that being said, on this sometimes I don't mind taking the, the brunt of it. If I know, I know. This one, I just don't. If I had the, you guys know me, if I had it, I, I would roll with it. I would roll with it. I don't have it. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I can't find this horrible mom in her. Like I'm looking. This is the worst it, that it gets right here. And everybody's saying this mom knew this, blaming this mom, blah, blah, blah. But nobody can show me concrete anything other than their feelings. And I don't live in feelings, unfortunately. I don't have the luxury of living in feelings, right? We have to have hard, cold reality. We have to have hard, cold facts because this is a mother of a murdered child. And before this channel is going to be fingering that mother, yeah, we do it all the time, right? Leilani, we got out there with the bullhorn. We got there out there in the bullhorn with Summer Wells. When we know, we know. I'm putting as much energy and effort in trying to find out the answers to this. Um, I just can't. We're seeing. We're starting to see some cracks emerge. We're starting to see some violent tendencies and some threats that were made by Stefan Stearns to, that, to, that can control the household. We are seeing those things. We're starting to see stuff. 
And everything is really, you know, leaning more toward the disgusting behavior of Stefan Stearns more so than mom. And that's hard. That's hard for me. That's hard for me. So I just want to be ultra fair here. I want to be realistic. Well, you know, unfortunately, I've never been accused of having these, 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 um, you know, uh, gushing blood heart feelings, right? In, in these cases, as a matter of fact, people say I'm mean and I'm too judgmental. Okay. Well, if you really truly believe that I am mean and, and, and really judgmental, you'll have to understand that why am I not doing it in this case? is because I'm not getting those key factors that I am used to and accustomed to seeing in cases like this for the mom. I'm just not. And um, again, you know, we are here doing this as a team effort. We all have to work together here. So I've got uh, across the platforms I'm running on, I have over 880 people. If you guys have something, send it to me bullhornbetty at gmail.com. Let me review it. Let me read it. Let me, um, let me do some, some referencing with it and see if I can get, you know, the value of it. But right now we've got nothing. If you have some stories about mom, now's the time to start bringing them to the world, folks. If you know this family, now's the time to start letting us in. If the mom is this horrible person, we need to know because somebody like me, I don't like being here and, and, and protecting or backing a monster. And if she had any hand in why her daughter is where she is and, and found in the condition she was found, I'd like to know. And I know my audience would too. But everybody that has come out about Jen seems like she, she was a lovely, loving person, a lovely person to be friends with. And it sounds like Stefan was the problem, has always been the problem. Friends saw it, family saw it, but mom didn't. Blinded by love. We have all been there, blinded by love. You you can't, we... That pedestal, that glass house, I'm just saying, that pedestal in that glass house, and mother added that this Sunday they were celebrating her birthday and that she did not notice any behavior that could indicate plans to run away. Another part that, that uh, kind of gave my theory a little more water and a little more weight is the fact that I said it sounded like mom wasn't even home that morning or was gone that morning. I even said, I pointed it out. I like there's something about that morning that's just not making sense. I just truly do not believe mom saw her daughter. And based upon what grandma said, she was really tired. That's why Stefan had to take her to school. I don't think she saw her daughter that morning. I think she was embarrassed to tell people she didn't even get to say goodbye to her own daughter before she was senselessly murdered. But I have a funny feeling that's going to be the facts that we're going to find out. Sad. It's sad. Now let's go back and look at some of those um, assessments I made. Let's see what we got. Hopefully you guys can hear this. <laughs> we're going to have to do, I think what we're going to have to do, I'm just going to quit using the equipment. So what's going to end up happening. I, I love my little buttons, right? I love to push my buttons, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But I might just have to do some testing, you know, in the beginning of the live. Hey, guys, we got to go through our, our morning test. Can you hear this? Can you hear me now? We're going to be like the, the 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 Verizon guy, right? Remember? Do you remember those old commercials? Can you hear me now? 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 I'm in the middle of the nowhere. Can you hear me now? Like he already knows the result. You get that? She's nervous and anxious and waiting for information. And her, to me, that's what her... Now, again, where's my... I don't believe... I believe the mom knew something bad happened to her daughter. It is of my opinion. And my opinion alone, um, not even collectively my channel's opinion, my opinion, that she lied because she didn't believe this man could harm her daughter. And again, this was before we even knew they were together for eight years. I knew it was a significant number of years, but not eight years. 
I did not know that. And just think about how freaking twisted this is. She just turned 13 years old and he's known her for eight years. He's known that little girl since she was five years old. Five years old. I think he targeted the mom. And I think he's probably been doing stuff with this little girl the entire time. It probably just didn't go to the extent that it has gone to over the last couple of years. But I just keep thinking how disgusting, how horrific eight years. Like if he was able to manip manipulate that woman for eight, like he, there's, I, I just don't believe that this woman ever thought in a million years, this man was doing this to her daughter. I, I just, I think that a lot of the fights and the stuff was maybe some weird behaviors, or maybe he was a little too rough with her daughter that they had arguments like that, but not, uh, not understanding the the true gravity of what was going on. I believe this guy manipulated was cunning, conniving to the mom. I think he abused and, um, made the little girl so much in fear that she didn't feel like she had anybody because think about it even her friends barely even knew the only thing and one of her friends could say is that she told me back in 2022 that he hurt her really bad and she left it at that and that very well could have been the first time she tried to tell somebody but even then she didn't know how to tell anybody only that he hurt her really bad and when you look at it like that, you're you're thinking to yourself, you know what, that does sound like what a kid would say, right? You know, because kids don't use big fancy words like us adults use um, when we're dealing with other adults. You know, they use very simplistic statements that make sense to them. And sometimes it's just like Nancy Grace says, dumb it down. What does that mean? Do you know that if she went to her mom and her mom just had the follow-up question of how did he hurt you? What difference that may have made to this point? But just like probably uh, every female that's dealing with a, you know, a problem, you know, man-child trying to deal with all the bills, trying to deal with all of this, trying to deal with the care of my daughter, going through the emotional wreckage of, of living with a narcissist manipulating piece of garbage. You know, anytime she, she went against him, he's probably saying, I'm just going to off myself, you know, uh, that kind of uh, mental abuse, emotional abuse. I don't know. I think now that the curtain has been lifted, I think that there is a, a flood of red flags that um, Jennifer is going to have to, she's going to end up punishing herself with for the rest of her life. The grandmother, do you think the grandmother, you know, and that's another point It's like, you know, it, 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 she was with her grandmother too. Her grandmother would have known. And, and I just don't see her grandmother blowing it off. You know, I just really feel like she didn't tell anybody. And somebody alleged that she told the school, listen, I know how schools are. And you you remotely breathe that you're being abused at home in any respect, physically or otherwise. You've got freaking, you know, the Calvary sitting on your front door by the time the school bell rings. So, you know, it's hard for me to, to say that, yeah, she did tell somebody because I really don't think she did. I just, I don't know why I have that feeling, but you're just not seeing all the things that you would, you would expect to. Let me see what you guys were saying. I haven't been paying attention. Sorry, guys. And I know, like I said, I know not everybody's opinion is going to match mine. And I know there are some of you got the guys that are like me. There's some of you that are even more in the middle than I am. There are some of you that are just like, I've, I've experienced this. I've seen that look. I've seen that talk. I know she's guilty. You know, it, it is what it is. I mean, I get it. I, I, I really do get it. I just, I, you know, for me to take my channel down um, that avenue, I need to have more corroborated information. And, and it's just lacking. 
it really is just lacking. I can't say one way or another, but based on everything I'm seeing here, I will tell you it appears that she did not know that this was going on. Only time will tell, and law enforcement has a hell of a lot more information than I do. But from where I'm sitting, whether you want to hear it or not, and, and maybe you guys can agree that, you know, there isn't any evidence to corroborate that. That, that is, our, you know, a lot of people's feelings about what happened. Um, I think if we can get on at least that platform, we can build on that because in all fairness, there's nothing here. And if there is, please send it to me because I'm obviously, I obviously can't find it. If we have something I'm missing, you know, because sometimes when you're building this stuff, you may miss something. I may have not saw this article or I may not have heard this person's testimony in one of the chat rooms or, you know, this over here. Or maybe I missed an interview with a law enforcement or an FBI somebody or a state attorney over here that I'm missing that nugget of information that I'm just missing out of my analysis. But right now, the way I'm looking at this is that everybody that was in and around that knew Jen before Stefan talks about this woman that loves loves her daughter. And then you have Stefan. And then all of a sudden, all this isolation, right? No friends coming around. Nobody really wants to be around her because of him, all this stuff. So he ends up isolating the family. Why is that important? Because we talk about a lot of, you know, domestic violence um, on this channel. And what is one of the key factors that allow domestic vi uh, violent offenders to thrive? Isolation. So we have to apply this stuff fairly, guys. I just, you know, maybe you guys are. Maybe you guys are. I digress. Let's see what else I had. Let's see how smart I was. <laughs> still, there's still some, you know, crusty crabs out there, so to speak. Um, <laughs> to say the least, right? And one of these people um, decided while we were getting together to do some oh, uh, meet and greets. Where so I, I think I was too far. Hold on, I was past that. I guess when it refreshed, it refreshed way past where I was wanting to go with this. Hold on. This is the, okay, here we go. I think it's right here. Here we go. This went on to a commercial. I'm sorry about that. It was in my ear. I don't know if you guys could hear it or not. No, we couldn't hear so it. So now we're going to the behavior Good panel. Lord. There's a few key things here about the behavior panel. I'm sorry. This lady on the screen here, she knows how to talk. She drives me up a freaking wall. Like, like tell this lady to shut up. Shut up with all her smartness and greatness. Um, we watched some, some stuff yesterday. We went through... Um, Jen Soto's interview, the, the one interview that she's provided, the one interview Stefan Stearns provided. No and sound. And we all could, could tell that. And does this one have no sound to you? I swear to God, I'm ready to tear this computer apart. It's calm down a little bit, but still, there's still some, you know, crusty crabs out there. <laughs> she felt deep in her stomach that he did something. This is what happened. I also had brought up. Can you guys hear that? That um, I felt like she was the breadwinner. That he, that she was, she works a lot and stuff like that. I believe that. Oh, here we go. Here we go with some of the analysis that I broke down. And and guess what? Today, now this was several days ago. That this was this was, this was several. This was a couple days, several days ago. I don't know when this was done. Let me look up here. Uh, two days ago. So a couple days ago. This was the analysis, and then we got all this other information, um, and and now I feel like I was really on to something here. So let's listen to my brainiac analysis. I do believe it was. I believe he was in her ear the entire time saying, you know me. You know I would never do this. This is what happened. I also had brought up that um, I felt like she was the breadwinner, that, he, that she, was, she works a lot and stuff like that. I believe that. And I think, and it, and it was more solidified when the behavior panel went over this, that I realized, you know what? I think that's where this is. You know, we're trying to figure out how this woman could not have known. I believe she had some feelings that something wasn't wrong. I think we all have those feelings. But I also think she dismissed it. And I'm not convinced that her daughter told her anything. There's no evidence of that. There's nobody that has even... Um, stated that she knew or that her daughter told her. There's none of that. Okay. There's none of that. 
But I also believe the instincts of a mom. And I think that she knew, I don't think she knew something like this, but I think she knew that there was some type of uneasiness between her boyfriend and her daughter. And I, I truly do believe she knew of the, you know, that her daughter has seen some of those adult arguments up in their house as, as well. So now I can't hear anything, not even you. <laughs> well, hopefully everybody else can hear me. So at least, uh, oh, okay, devil doll. Do you want me to hold the seat or your hair? I don't know which. No, <laughs> just joking. I'm just joking. Um, I can excuse the senseless act of parenting as a mother. It's your role to protect. I'm sorry, but I can't understand how she wouldn't, she wouldn't know. <laughs> See, that's the, that's the million dollar question because I can tell you, I've met, I've met several moms that didn't know that were absolutely blindsided by that fact. Um, you know, that's, that's the problem is that we have a mixed bag of um, a, a mixed bag here because we have people on one hand and there are people in this chat on both sides because we have people on one hand that were abused and they they never told their parent and were absolutely terrified of their abuser. And so it kept their mouth shut. But on the other hand, they were scared to death and finally opened up their mouth to their mom and then their mom didn't believe them. So finally, when they get the courage to tell an adult and they go and tell mom, mom didn't believe them. Mom thought they were just trying to cause a fight to get them to break up. Wouldn't pay any mind to the child, probably because the child had behavioral issues and was causing problems. But the behavioral issues were a direct result of the abuse that they were undergoing. So a lot of people are mixed because again, we have people that have been abused in the same exact situation that have never told a soul until later. And then we have another side of the group that actually did tell somebody and the person that they told them didn't believe them. So that's why we're having the mixed bag of emotions because everybody's experience in this topic is a little different. And I'm sure that there are some people out there that not only went through the abuse, but told their parent and their parent did do something about it as well. But is there a possibility that this woman just did not know? I mean, think about it with the medication she was on, the fact that she was, you know, basically drugged at night whether she did it herself or somebody else was helping her to it, is there a possibility that this lady was just so absent-minded and so diluted in her life, she couldn't see the trees for the forest? That's all I'm simply asking. Is it possible? Because a lot of people believe it's not possible. This lady just threw her daughter to the wolves. And I'm just, my heart's bleeding for her because I, if I truly believed it, of all people, you know, I don't give a damn about this lady's feelings if she did something horrible to her daughter. I'd be up here blasting her if she was this horrible person. I just don't, again, I just don't see it. Um, I'm praying to God. I'm right on this topic. You know, I really am. I'm praying to God. I'm right on this not to be right. Just because... It's hard because, you know, I, I think all of us, you know, we look at our, I mean, some people probably don't have the best moms in the world, right? I had a very strong mom, right, that went through a lot to raise us kids, uh, a lot more than I allege on here. And, uh, you know, my mom did the best she could, too. She, she would never, you know, we never had to deal with any of this, I can tell you that. Um, and if we ever went to my mom about anything, I can guarantee you she would believe us no matter how horrible of children we were like I was God's worst child to a parent. And I guarantee if, if somebody was, you know, messing with me and I went to my mother, my mother would believe me despite of, you know, how mischievous I was. Um, I truly believe that. Uh, so there are some people out there that don't have that, uh, you know, that ability they don't have a that don't have a 
mom, um, you know, some of these people have moms that they love, but mom is, you know, substanced out, you know, has her own um, issues going on. Look at this, uh, this girl that's, uh, what, I don't even remember what state where her neighbor has taken off with her and everybody's looking for her right now because they believe this guy kidnapped her and is keeping her and come to find out, uh, which it, it, it could still very well be true. We don't know what this man's intentions are, but when you look at her life, it's like, you know, her home life wasn't much better either. I mean, she was getting hard by her stepdad, her dad's on drugs, her mom's freaking crazy. And um, she ran off with her neighbor and her dog. I mean, you know, you're looking at this thing and saying, well, which is better? <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, that's this poor girl. You know, this poor girl, she's, she's somewhere in this country with probably somebody that's not a good person for her. And, and, and even as, as horrible of a person is for her, it's probably 10 times worse for her at home. So what choice do you choose? Do you choose to advocate to take her home, to bring her home? Like, I, like I'm confused here. I'm confused. I'm, I'm a human being. I'm normal. You know, I try to process this and it's like, you know, when you process this, I should not be, nor, nor should anybody else be judge or jury, right? Or, 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 or whatever. You guys get what I'm trying to say. But what do you do? She willingly went to this guy. She was forced to be in this situation. Like, what do you do? And no matter how you look at it, it's all horrible. We advocate to bring her home. She's going back to hell. I just, you know, there was a time, I don't remember the kid's name, but you guys remember the mom was on every place trying to get her son to come home and Everybody was asking us to, uh, Olivia and I, to step into that case and to advocate and try to find him. And I, I got to be honest with you, we did locate him. We located this boy and he told us about uh, the abuse and we could see the abuse. Like he would pop in on his um, Instagram or his uh, TikTok or something and leave a video here and a video there. But his mom kept trying to say that he was with this um ST person or SA person that was abusing her son and come to find out he ran away from his mom because his mom was abusing him. And, and so, you know, naturally I, I don't know what is, I'm not touching that case because I, I absolutely 100% was informed and provided corroborating information that not only did he go down to law enforcement, he absolutely filed um, cases with the own, his own Department of Children and Family Services begging them for help against his own mother. No, I'm not going to find that kid or, or, re, or help reunite him with his mother. It's not my job to do that. I run cases and I do the best I can for these cases, but if I see something that's not good, I mean, what do you do? What do you do? When I feel like sending them home is, is, is worse, you know, what do you do? I just won't cover the case. If I'm, if I'm uneasy about it, I won't cover the case. This case here, I'm not really uneasy about. I'm just trying to be, I'm just hopeful, you know, like out of all this that's gone on, I'm just, I, I'm really rooting for mom not to be this piece of garbage. You know what I'm saying? I think that's really what's eating at me is because I am 50-50 on this. You know, did mom allow this to happen? Did she not? And just, there's just a piece in me that's just, just begging and begging and pleading that this is not who she is. You know, I think that's where I'm at with it. But anyways, guys, I want you to have a happy Sunday. Sorry for all the technical issues, as you can imagine, with it happening almost every day this week. I'm at my wit's end with the, the whole audio issues. Like, I'm literally over it. I cannot stand audio issues. It's the one thing that literally drives me berserk. So it appears that, at least for today, the audio is, is working better than it was when we started. Uh, but that's the end of the show. That's really all I have. Take it for what you will. Uh, unfortunately, even my audience out there that is on the opposite side of this, I'll try to find some conversations about the opposite side of the story. And I have been looking. I have to be honest with you. I've really been looking to find those gotcha moments for the mom, you know, to, to be honest with you, not because I, I want to get the mom. It's just that we have to look at that side of things as well. 
and I'm just not finding them. So I just, if, if, if we're going to blame mom or we're going to have this feeling that mom may have known more about it, I know you guys are amazing people and do amazing work and are in all different places. If you guys can 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 research and send me something, Snow, you're amazing at this stuff. Send me something. Let me have something, just a little bit of meat that I can hold on to and say and, and start getting me off this fence. But right now I'm just stuck on this fence because I'm looking at this. I'm looking, I'm trying to look at all a lot of stuff to make a determination of this mom. And I'm just seeing a great mom here. And, you know, she has her own problems. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody, we're, none of us are perfect. Uh, I guarantee your mom, your own mother probably has made a million mistakes, but you love your mom and your mom is the best mom to you. That's what I'm talking about. Not that her mom, but she was a good mom. And I just don't see where, where this great mom went from being this great mom to being this, here's my daughter, enjoy type of woman. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. So help me, help me understand your perspective, right? So I've got like a 50-50 split here in this chat right now that thinks that this mom had something to do with it. Start sending me some of those reasons. Like, like in your when you guys send me to bullhornbetty at gmail.com, send me some stuff that's leaning you. Like you had to have read something that started making you feel this way. Send me what you were reading and explain why you felt that way based off your reading. If you want to elaborate that in that detail. Um, if not, you just want to send me an article, uh, please send me an article. I'm open. I'm open with this case. I just, I just have my own personal feelings in this case as well, you know? So just help me, help me help you. Okay. <laughs> help me help you. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Being here. You guys were amazing. Don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And until next time, please be safe. But more importantly, please be kind to thy neighbor. We say no to online bullying, no to online harassment, and no to you just being a general POS, okay? Everybody is given an opportunity to go make their day great. So you need to be working on yours, just like Bullhorn Betty needs to be working on hers. God bless. As you wake up in the morning, you want to find the latest, greatest information about criminal cases and have an intuitive conversation about the suspects associated with these cases. Head over to the Bullhorn Betty channel on YouTube. Get breaking news right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. Enjoy your stay and enjoy your day.